Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Anessa and I'm an indie author from Toronto, Canada and I publish under the pen name Hey and Sage. I write fantasy, a lot of YA and a lot of mystery. And if you want to see more content from an author kind of going about their business and sharing some tips and tricks on how to be a creative entrepreneur in today's day and age, then make sure that you are subscribed so you don't miss any other new videos coming out. Today, I want to talk about something um, that I think is really important. If you are writing any kind of uh, mystery and anything that has to do with solving a murder, for example, um, I am currently working my way through a paranormal cozy mystery. So there's fantasy in it. Um, there's magic in it. But there's also the main portion of it, which is the mystery part, the cozy mystery part. Um, and this is specific to an Agatha Christie type of mystery setting, which is what I'm working on. But the tips I'm sharing with you today could work for any murder mystery that you're writing or really any murder scene. So um, as you may have noticed from the title, we're talking about writing killer scenes. <laughs> so the emphasis here is on the killing part. <laughs> and um, it's a bit morbid, but what we're going to do is uh, talk about some tips that I have have for, well, murder. <laughs> so let's get to it. Um, your main thing that you want to think about when you are writing a murder mystery or you are trying to plot some kind of murder um, is you want to have a somewhat unusual detective. So usually that's your main character. Um, now I do have a mystery in my Shadowverse Mysteries um, series, but that's more of a YA contemporary fantasy, but every book does have a mystery, something to solve. Um, they're not always murder mystery, although book one, which of Shadows is. And so it could apply if you're writing to something like that. Now, when I mean, what I mean when I say unusual detective, um, you want to have a detective that's a bit off the beaten path. Um, probably somebody who is like an amateur sleuth, maybe that's a lot, um, that what you see in cozy mysteries, for example. Um, but even if you have like a, a regular straightforward detective who works for the police force or the FBI or whatever, um, you want to give them some quirks, right? Like they, they can't be just so straightforward. So by the books, because that's boring. Um, it's not going to drive your plot. And and you want them to make interesting decisions that are going to kind of influence how they're solving this mystery. Um, my, uh, in the cozy mystery I'm currently writing, the main character, the detective, she's an amateur sleuth, um, she's not really a detective, she's actually a coffee shop owner um, and she's a witch. Um, so she's got some unusual traits. She's a witch who can't witch. Um, and she's very bad at magic. <laughs> Her whole family is very powerful. She comes from a very powerful family of witches, but she cannot witch for the life of her. Um, and there is a backstory to that. So um she's unusual in that way um her lack of control of her magic her lack of power it hinders her and it defines how she goes about solving these murders right um she's gonna be more careful she's um not gonna jump into things right away she's gonna need a bit of a push and a pull right um and so the plot is going to be more interesting with her solving these murders than say if she was um an like somebody who's very powerful, knows what she was doing, um, it would go by quicker, right? Like you want to put um, different kind of obstacles in their way, which is all part of character development. But if you have a somewhat quirky, unusual detective, it, it's easier to do so. Um, it also makes them more three-dimensional and it can add humor, which is something you want to think about also when you're writing a murder mystery, because otherwise, um, unless you're writing like horror and darker um, subjects, but if you're writing a cozy like I am right now, then you want to have some humor in there and kind of lighten the mood, right? Um, you want to Talk, think about your setting. You want to create a setting um, that is conducive to a murder, right? Um, so it can be a dark setting, um, like it, it could be a, a, and then there were none type of setting where somebody is just like killing people off one by one and they're in a secluded space where they can't escape. Um, that's a setting. That's a setting that is perfect for a murder because there's nowhere to go. Um, a close knit community where everybody knows it everybody and it's a who done it because i mean you it's unexpected every time because you would never expect you know your really lovely grandmother who bakes cookies for all the children in the neighborhood to be a cold-blooded murderer so um your setting needs to be 
a part of your plot, right? A lot of times the murder mystery, the setting helps drive the actual murder because uh, there could be a murder of opportunity. So something's going to be left behind. So you need to have a setting that allows for the killer to have something to kill with. Um, it could be a psychological type of um, um sorry, a, psycho a psychological setting um, where whatever they have around them is what makes them kill. You want to think of a setting that would make somebody want to kill, basically. Um, and we're going to talk about motive and all that stuff a little bit later. Um, you also want to build tension in every scene. The thing about murder mysteries, um, what makes them super interesting is you're slowly building up the tension to the big reveal, the big finale. Um, and, and in the beginning, you're slowly working up the tension to the murder. And so you want to build every single scene with a bit of tension, a bit of push and pull, um, and your unusual detective is going to be feeling that a lot, and they're going to be acting based off of this tension. Um, so tension in a killer scene, in a killer plot, really, where we're creating killer plots, um, is what's going to drive your reader to want to turn the page because they're going to be invested. They're going to be either afraid, they're going to be uncomfortable, they're going to be intrigued, but there's always going to be some sort of tension that makes them want to see what happens next. And another <laughs> tip that I have, and this is going to sound super creepy, um, so like don't report me, but you want to have a murder board. <laughs> hold, <laughs> bear with me. Um, I don't mean necessarily like a giant board where you plan out murders, but it could be that. Um, I have a bullet journal where I have miniature murder boards. And what I mean by a murder board is um, if you think about like any detective movie that you've seen, um, especially the super old school ones, they would have a board with the red lines that are going from place to place or person to person, right? And you want that because what you want to do, and I find this is the easiest. I start this for every single one of my books before I know the plot, before I know anything. This is what I do. I create a murder board. I put my victim in the center. Um, and I actually got this tip from, um, I think, um, oh, it was another book. I will link it below. I think it was um, Plotting a Cozy Mystery, but I will link the book below and they kind of go through this. But what you do is you um, put the victim right in the center, like in a bubble or however you want to do it. And then you have lines, your little red strings going away from your victim. So the person who's getting killed. And in at the end of each one of those strings is another person that the victim knew and what you would do is on the string, the line, you would write the motive. So every single person, which is going to be who your unusual detective goes through and interviews and tries to figure out that they did it. Um, but every single person should have a motive. Um, every person around us, because you want to create confusion, right? Only one of those people will have a killer. So put a big K next to them or like a skull and crossbones, which is what I do sometimes to make it cute. Uh, you got to make murder cute. <laughs> You're writing a murder mystery. <laughs> But you want to make sure that it's confusing for the reader that everybody might want this person dead. And this is very popular also in young adult mysteries because usually you have like the cheerleader that was actually nice and she gets killed and everybody wanted her dead, right? So that's a very popular uh, plot in the murder mystery. But essentially on your board, that's what you want. And once you have that, I can guarantee you it's going to be so much easier for you to go ahead and branch out and plot all your tension, get the setting out of that murder board alone, right? Because you will know um, who is related to whom, how they're related to each other. You know, you, you're going to have some crisscrossing lines there because like um, suspect a and suspect B might know each other in a way and they would point fingers at each other when the interviews happen. So as you're working on this murder board, you're going to have your setting that you might need to figure out of how these people fit in and where they could have run into your victim, um, how they all know each other, um, the tension between them, right? So it will help you a lot to just start with this one big board. Um, you want to think about your twist. That's the next thing you want to consider when you are thinking of a murder mystery. Every good murder mystery has a twist. Your reader has to be like, oh, I know who did it. This person did it. I'm just waiting to find out like how they did it, why, you know? Um, and then there's a big twist at the end. 
And it's somebody they never saw coming, right? But you saw them coming because you had a murder board. So think about your twist. Um, You could have more than one twist. You could have more than one murder and multiple twists for each one. So consider that because your twist is what's going to be that like aha moment for your detective, but it's also going to be the wall moment for your reader. And because you have a twist, you need to think about misdirection or red herrings. You want to lead your reader down a path where they're thinking it's this person for sure. um, And then it turns out to be somebody they don't expect, right? And in order to do that, you need to add misdirection. So you can work on that two ways. You can either work it into your plot, and I sometimes do a bit of both, or you can backtrack later and go through and add more clues, more misdirections, right? Um, So you want to the kind of veer your reader away from where you're taking them but make sure that when you're doing this that it's not obvious right because when there's an obvious misdirection when there's an obvious red herring it makes them say like oh this is too obvious it's obviously this guy so it obviously is not this guy right so you want to make sure that it's a realistic red herring um and that can be hard to do um, then you want to think about your hook. Um, and these are not in order because, I mean, your hook you should really be thinking about first. But you do want to think about your hook. Um, and you need to have a good enough hook for your readers to say, hey, you know what? Like, I care about this person. And if they're dying, I want to know why. Um, or I can't stand this person. And if they're dying, I want to know how. <laughs> so you want to have a hook, right? Um, something that gets your reader going. And usually that hook will come up very early in your novel and usually that hook will also be kind of your tagline as well so take a look at some of the mysteries out there why mysteries are fantastic for hooks by the way they have great great hooks um so take a look at taglines for different mysteries and see what their hooks are and kind of um, see where your book will fit in along those lines then you want to know your crime you need to know your crime and say you basically have to be the killer you need to be in their mindset you need to know your crime every little point that happens and the reason you want to know this you don't have to know your whole plot um and what that's going to be kind of like my last point to talk about this you don't need to know your whole plot but you do need to know your whole crime um the reason you want that is because as you're writing um you can talk about certain things there should be nods um and you won't write yourself into a corner this way um i find that i had a couple of instances where i didn't necessarily know the crime inside and out and i had to write rewrite um an entire third act of of a book because everything changed um it didn't make sense what i was writing as i was working through this crime um it wasn't intricate enough um or sometimes it was too confusing um so know your crime before you sit down to write and figure out where your points are that you really need to drive home before you write anything before you even put down the first sentence and then much like the red herring um and the misdirection you want to sprinkle in clues right so once you know your crime once you know your murder um you want to sprinkle in little clues and you can do this after but you can add senses right think of all the senses there's different smells you can add in that will later on make sense um that the reader will be like oh i remember that yes cinnamon that was important like i don't know it's just something um different places that your um detective might have visited that could be the thing that solves helps them solve the crime at the end um different objects um things that people have kind of said in conversation that was part of just a natural conversation, but in the end, um, it's the thing that solves the crime or something that leads the detective down the path that will get them closer to solving the crime. So every single one of your scenes um, should be building up to a clue or should have a clue in it um, because that's going to make it interesting for your reader. That's going to make your reader more invested in the story. It's all the little pieces that form the puzzle, right? Um, if you just gave your reader a puzzle, like a puzzle to solve and it had like six pieces in it, that's boring. They'd solve it in a second, right? You want them to have like a 5,000 piece puzzle that's also 3D. <laughs> so you want to think about that. So give them clues, give them things that they can latch on to. Um, give them things that they don't know are clues until later on and it gets them excited that they missed it because that is exciting as a reader and then finally you want to leave room to explore so 
with a murder mystery, it requires a lot of plotting. There's some people who can write a murder mystery and not plot, and I command them. I cannot do that. Um, but it does usually, for most authors, it requires a lot of plotting and planning. Um, but you don't want to plot and plan so much that there's no room for growth. There's no room for discovery writing. Because the beauty of a murder mystery is the surprise element. Um, and the best way that that happens is sometimes when you're writing, you surprise yourself. Because if you're surprised, then your reader is going to be surprised. So what I usually do is I have the bones of my plot, and it's usually fairly regimented. Um, I definitely have my murder board. I have all that figured out. But as I'm writing, I give myself permission to change <laughs> what I had planned. And a lot of times I'll go through and I'll slowly revise the outline as I'm writing, because I am discovering things that are more interesting, that are sneakier, um, that are scarier, you know? <laughs> Um, things that have better misdirection, um, things that will have a better finale. And so give yourself a chance to grow with your plot. And that's very, very important. You want to explore and you want to be just as surprised sometimes as the reader, uh, because the more you surprise yourself as you're writing, I can guarantee you it comes off on the page and your reader will be surprised too. So that is what I have for you for writing killer plots or killer scenes or just, you know, thinking like a killer <laughs> basically um, i hope that helped if you are working on a murder mystery or if you're not i hope it inspired you to write one because they are really really fun to write so i highly recommend it um, and as always thank you for sticking around thank you for being a part of this channel part of this community i'm going to try to work on a few more videos it's been kind of a hectic month here as i have um, kind of explained in my last author chat if you want to go ahead and watch that but I'm going to try to work on some more uh, things for our resource library. So I'll have some videos um, that would require like templates or, or things that could help you guys out. Uh, but let me know if there's any specific resources that you're looking for that I can create for you. Um, so I'll just make sure that I'll check out the comments on this. So if you have anything that you definitely want to see in the resource library, then make a comment below and I'll do my best to accommodate to create it and create some videos explaining it and stuff like that. But as always, thank you so much for being around here, for being a viewer, for watching this video, um, for liking it if you liked it. Um, and I hope you stay magical and I will see you next week for another video. Bye.